is the end. Now, um, <laughs> I was nervous on a stage like this. My, my great uncle, many years ago, apparently, he was on a platform that had been hastily, hastily erected and it collapsed. And he'd have broken both his legs, but as luck would have it, they just put a rope around his neck. <laughs> <laughs> I had a great mass, mass is full of puzzles and, and tricks and things. And you, I, you never, I never tire of hearing on And I read this the other day. Lewis Carroll, who wrote Alice in Wonderland, through the Looking Glass, he came up with this one. Try this, tell me the answer to this. Alf and Bert had a thousand pounds each. And they took it and put it in the bank. The next day, Alf and Bert went to the bank and they had well over a million between them. How? And, oh, the second day, Alf stood in front of the bank and Bill stood behind the bank. And they had well over a million between them. <laughs> Terrible, but I'm a uh, rat. <laughs> I, I, this is called past imperfect, future fantastic. We've not always done things right in the past in science, technology, and engineering, and all kinds of things. We make mistakes, and scientists make mistakes. But I think uh, at the end of the, of the program, I want you to get a feeling the feeling that I have for the future and the future of your kids, right? So, when I did my shows, I had audience participation. People participate. So will you participate? Yeah. Hands up those who would like to come on stage and assist as assistants by being assisting uh, and assisting as assistants. Too many. Put your hands down. Right. <laughs> I have ways of choosing. I've got an arrow of putting people up there. I've got an arrow of putting people up there. It's a very good device. It's a car with a hat on the front side, on the top side, a hat on the back side, on the top side, a hat on the each side, on the top side. Are you with me so far? <laughs> if I take the time, I've got them both in the middle. Never mind. If I turn it so the arrow on the front side is pointed to the right side, the arrow on the back side is pointed to the right side. Left side. <laughs> so what I've actually got is an arrow on each side, on the opposite side. So the front one goes down, the back one goes up, arrow on each side, on the opposite side. Whereas the front one goes left, the back one goes right, arrow on each side, on the opposite side. So if I turn it around the front, he's pointing up, the arrow on the back must be pointing up. Why am I showing you this? Because I like it. I think you're nice. I want to be a friend. <laughs> and I'm worried about you. I'm worried about you kids. It's not the pair. I'm not worried about them. They can look after themselves. I'm worried about you kids. Do you know why? Because you've never got enough money. <laughs> Hands up those kids who've got too much spending money. There's one idiot. <laughs> <laughs> never admit you've got too much spending money. Never admit it. Right. <laughs> Tell me 40 quid! Right, there you go. So, no, so I worry about you because you don't have a lot of money. And what happens? You know, people have birthdays and Christmas at your house. And what have you got to do, kids, for Christmas? You have to buy people presents with your money. It's ridiculous. What a silly system. So next time it's Christmas or a birthday at your house, don't buy nobody money. <laughs> Keep your money to yourself. <laughs> But you have to give them something, you know, you have to give them something. So what are you going to give them? Make them one of these. <laughs> Wrap it nicely. You are man, Merry Christmas. <laughs> but to make one of these, all you need, basically, is a card with an arrow on the front going up and on the back going... <laughs> so... <laughs> it goes silent. When you turn it, you don't turn it like that, and you don't turn it like that, you turn it on the diagonal. You know what a diagonal is? Yeah. yeah. well on this diagonal, the harrow points the same way. But on this diagonal, the harrow points the opposite way. What is it? Rubbish. <laughs> I mean, you know, how dare I start a lecture at a university with this rubbish? What is it? Well, you could call it art, because you've got a symmetrical arrow on a square card. Art. On the other hand, it's a machine, it's just a function, it's a gadget, it does something. Which may, means it might be engineering, or science, or technology. You spell it the way it sounds, and you'll always spell it right. Technology, alright? Doesn't matter what you say. So there, 
It could be overlooked. And in fact it is overlooked. This is all science, engineering and technology. Why? Because this is maths. No numbers, but this is maths. What you see on the other side is determined by the angle you turn the car through. So it's maths. And that's the first thing all you kids must remember and never forget. The most important thing you do at school is your maths. Enjoy your maths. Go with the flu. Don't get left behind in your maths. It's not difficult. Maths. It's boring. <laughs> the school curriculum gets more and more boring, but it's not difficult, so stick with it. And if you stick with maths all the way through school, you come out of school or even university with good maths. And there is no career that is not open to you. How about that? Maths is the key. The first thing a person looks at, they're going to employ you, they're going to use you, they think you've got talent to you. How's your maths? If your maths is good, you've got every chance. So you remember that, will you? Yeah. Anyway, let's get rid of this. <laughs> right. Why do, I, why do I do this, you might ask me? I was born in Bristol. I've just been to Bristol today. Oh, it's murder to get round. But I was born in Bristol. And, um, near me now. And, um, and I went to school. And I was always very good in school. I was always top one next to top and top in maths. And I took my L&D plus. And then my parents moved 200 miles or so to Bolton in Lancashire. But I found them. <laughs> <laughs> I moved as well. <laughs> and I went to Bolton County Grammar School in Bolton. Probably like that, because they had the best going to be out there. I was in Bolton, so the first year they put me on 2B, because I don't have primary school, 2B. Second year, I was in 3C. 2B, 3C. Third year, I was in 4D. <laughs> This is perfectly true, every word. The next year I was in lower 5E. And the last year I was in 5E because it didn't have a 5F. <laughs> and I was a failure at school. I got two O levels. It's equivalent to 37 GCSEs today. <laughs> two O levels, that's all I got. One was maths, and the other one wasn't. <laughs> it was geography, and that was it. And I was kicked out of school. And I remember saying to my teacher, Mr. Sandbach, who I, I thought was lovely, and I said, but well, sir, I want to be a writer. He said, you just say English language and English literature, you've got no time to get out. And they threw me out. And I got a job. Now, it took four months to get a job, because I got no qualifications. But eventually I got a job with the Havilland Aircraft Corporation, who made um, aircraft parts, propellers, something like that. Once I joined them, I took off. <laughs> now I did. Once I was in the real world, I had no trouble. My confidence soared. And suddenly I'd do it. They go on this course, I go on the course, get this quality game, go and get three more other levels. I went and got them. First time, bang, got them. English language, English literature, history, got them on my own. And suddenly I'm a different person. So that's the next thing I want to say to you, because this is very important. I want to say to you kids, I don't care what level you are at at school. I love saying this because the teachers and the parents go, oh my God. I don't, <laughs> but I don't care. Why don't I care? Because of all you kids, not one of you is punching, punching or working at your full potential. Not one of you. And you won't because you're kids. And as a kid, you don't reach your full potential. You reach your full potential as you gain maturity, as you go through your changes, as you become an adult. That's when you gain your full potential. So don't worry, I say, unless things are really bad, but don't worry, because <laughs> you can repair it. And you'd be amazed how a couple of years it changes. And everybody's different. People have different learning patterns, different ways of absorbing. Some people get very nervous, and it's the nervousness that makes them, that stops them learning. One of my sons, exactly the same. Quivering mass, I saw him once, when I was asking a group of lads to do a song, and he was like that. And it's because he said to him, school, you must be good at maths than your dad. And he ruined it, you see. And, and he never really recovered, except he's good at maths now. But that's the thing, so you can repair it to the last thing. So I got there, and once I was there, I thought, 
And then the ambulance, my company started it up. I thought, I've got no qualifications. What can I do? So I started looking for books. I started educating myself. Now, this is what you have to do. You have to, sooner or later, educate yourself. If you come here to this university, people will tell you what you might do, and that's the end of it. True? If you don't do it, it doesn't get done. Nobody will do it for you. It's not like at home when you never cook a meal because your mother always cooks it. No. It's, and suddenly you're on your own. So start it now, especially uh, in your teens. Whatever you want to do, make sure that that desire becomes a hobby now. And that way, you'll start learning the skills you need. Naturally, not within the curriculum, but outside the curriculum, reading books about it. If you want to be an airline pilot, go and talk to airline pilots. Get involved in it. And that's what you have to do. And, and so, so that's what, right, so that's okay. So that's what it, I started reading books. And that's why I'm going to show you a few slides of the things I learned to, uh, uh, today. Now, I have the point it is. This could be very funny because I don't know what I'm pressing. Oh, that's it. Very good. <laughs> Bit of nudity. Now, anybody know who produces? Anybody know who produces? Here we are, going back there. Leonardo da Vinci, how old are you? 13, very good. Leonardo da Vinci. And he's absolutely right, and you can see, because the writing is backwards. Now, why did he write backwards? We know he was dyslexic, we know he was very talented. We don't know why he wrote backwards. It's not code. Stick a mirror against it, you can read it through the mirror. So why did he do it? We think he probably did it to annoy his teachers. <laughs> Just to annoy his teachers. And it stuck with him for the rest of his life. But he drew this. Now, this is a perfect example of what you've got to do, kids, in life. 